So in the last video, I went through and set up the, uh, the index page in our login form. Now I need to start going through and building out our process login uh, functions and some of the other functions that we're going to be using throughout the application. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my editor and I'm going to open our functions.php page. Right now there's nothing in there, uh, so I'm going to start building this out. And right now I'm just going to set up a function or a placeholder for each of our functions and then go from there and actually build them out. Uh, so I'm going to do function process login and I'm going to be passing in post data to this. Uh, so I'm going to put it in my um, parameters as well or my arguments. Uh, so I'm going to do function update contact post function save contact post and I need to do this so that way um, I can call different methods I could pass in um, something to check if the ID is set and use one function but I think it's easier to read if you set up two separate functions and, and call them uh, independently uh, so now we're going to do function update category post Function save category. Again, passing in post data. Oops. Function get categories. And I'm not going to pass anything in because I'm just getting data back, so I don't need to modify any of the information inside of the function. And function get contacts. Oops, I forgot my parameter here. So I need category ID so that way I can pull them by individual categories. Function get contact. I'm going to pass in a specific ID so that way I can just pull one contact. Uh, function get category. Again, pass in an ID so I only have to pull one uh, category. And function get connection, which we're going to be using to get our uh, database connection. Display error message. So if we have any errors or anything like that, then we can use this to display our error messages. And we're going to pass in parameters so that way we can modify the message that's going to be put out to the screen. Um, I'm going to change these because I accidentally put lowercase. Whoops, okay, I did it again. Just want to stay con uh, consistent. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my uh, get connection method. Uh, this is going to be the most important. So I'm going to do connection equals MySQL connect. And I'm going to pass in a host. So I'm going to do local host since I'm running off of my local machine and I'm going to do a user of root since my root user is my main user um, and no password so and then we're also going to specify a database so we need to do mysql select db and then in action is the name of my database so make sure that you modify this if you're using a different name database or uh, if you modify any of the tables you're going to be using. Um, so I am going to be uh, giving you guys a file that will actually create uh, the tables in the database. So if you want to use the same database name, that would probably be the easiest thing if you're following this tutorial. And then we're going to return our connection. And our get connection piece is all set up. Um, since I'm down towards the bottom of this file, I am going to uh, create our display error message which basically is an echo statement that puts out a div with a class of ERR and then it echoes our MS or our message that we pass in and that's all that that does um, I just think it's easier and it makes this piece of code uh, reusable if you put it in a function uh, one thing that I haven't covered is why I'm 
breaking everything out into separate files and converting everything to functions rather than having them in, uh, in line. Here, it makes it easier for me and it, it makes your code more reusable if you make a function for your login form. Where you're calling it in two places, you would have to copy and paste uh, that login form and um, it just makes things a little bit easier and more reusable. If you have to modify that login form and you have it on 52 pages, then you don't want to have to go around and modify it in all those pages. If you do it in one function and you just call that function, you just have to modify it wherever that function is and then you're, you're good to go. Um, and then that makes things a little more manageable because all of your functions are at one location. You don't have to go through uh, individual files to, to grab them. Um, if you're including them, like using the include once or the require once uh, statement, then you can just go ahead and pull them in and use them as you need them. Um, so those two pieces are all set up. I'm going to go up to the process login since uh, that is really the first function that we're going to be using a lot. So I'm going to do connection equals get connection and I need the capital there. And we're going to make a query. And I'm going to select everything from users where our username is equal to post username. You guys can probably hear my dryer in the background. All right, and that's all set up. And where password is equal to SHA1, which is the encryption type that I'm using. And I'm going to pass in dollar sign post password, so the value that I'm getting from our form. And I'm going to limit it to one. So that should be our query, and that should be all set up now. Um, and we're going to grab the results. My SQL, SQL query. Query. And we're going to do if MySQL num rows of our results is greater than zero. So it's checking if we've gotten at least one result back from our database. Um, if it has, then we're going to go through and we're going to get that data. So we're going to do row equals MySQL fetch associative array Oops, from our results variable. And we're going to use uh, session, which um, we need to make sure that our, our start session is called wherever this function is going to be called. So that way we have a, a session created. Otherwise, these pieces will not work. Oops, login. I'm going to set logged in equal to true in our session array. We're going to use our row ID. And this is just in case you ever wanted to use this. Let's say you had a user page and you wanted to uh, output the current user's information. You can just either um, put the ID in the session variable along with their username and the status of whether they're logged in, or you could also um, just use the ID and then pull it up uh, from the database once you got to that page. And then we're going to do session username. And we're going to return true. So that way the value going back is true. Otherwise, we're going to return false if there was anything wrong with our query. Um, so now our process login pay, uh, piece should work. Um, I'm just going to go through and explain, explain this one more time. Uh, we first check if the user is logged in. If they have, then they're going to be spit out to the uh, list.php page. And then, um, so the, they'll actually be able to access those lists that we, we saw in uh, the previous video. 
If not, then we're going to include the forms and the functions, and we're going to check if our login form has actually been submitted. If it has, then we're going to um, start processing our login, and that's where that process login piece uh, comes in, where we just uh, built that. And if that process login returns true, then we're going to return uh, set those session variables and send them over to the list.php page. Um, if, that, if there's any issues, then we're going to include our header.php, uh, which is really going to be for our CSS stuff. Um, and we're going to display our error message. And we're also going to redisplay our login form, so that way they have a chance to retry their login. Um, and that is pretty much it. So if I save that and jump out to my page, I refresh. And if I try John, which I don't believe is actually... Tony, I know is not one. If I try and log in, then we should get. Oh, hold on a second. All right, I read. All right, I I misspelled submitted. There we go. So now this should work, providing my uh, variables line up. If I go back out to my page and retry. There we go. Uh, so now I got my error message displaying up here and I get a chance to uh, log in again. So now if I log in using a username and password that I know is correct, if I hit log in and then we get redirected to our lists.php page. Um, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to go on to, to part three and uh, start uh, continue with this video. I got to clear my sessions since I don't have a logout piece. Or actually maybe I'll, uh, I'll do that right now. I'll just create the logout the uh, logout page really quick. Um, so going to our logout.php page, we're just going to do opening and closing PHP tags. We have to start our session even though we're just going to be destroying it right away. But it's going to have some session to destroy so we have to actually create it. And then we're just going to do session destroy and we're going to redirect the person back to so we need the location index.php so they can log in again. So now save that. I'll come back out to my page and type in logout.php and I've just successfully logged out. Uh, so that piece is all set up for us and we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, I'm going to go on to part three uh, which will start building out um, the different forms and stuff that we're going to be using for our categories in our contacts. Uh, so stay tuned for that.